And first up uh, on this panel is Joe Knuckles, um, who has various affiliations. <laughs> One of them is the University of Edinburgh, um, the University of Glasgow, the National Library of Scotland, and uh, he is also uh, a satellite member, you could uh, say, of the, of, the, of the cooperative. So, um, yeah, very well established in, this, in uh, academia. <laughs> At least well known there. Um, good. And the talk is entitled How to Best Facilitate HDR Work, Study of Transcribers of Free Processing Requests. <laughs> about how uh, people are putting the free credits that are available through our scholarship programs to good use in practice. Then the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Introduction. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, and it's good to be finally physically present in Innsbruck uh, three years into uh, my current PhD, of which this is hopefully going to end up as a thesis chapter in some sort of um, way, shape or form. Um, we had um, yesterday the privilege to hear six um, presentations from those who've benefited from the free um, processing um, scheme or the transcriber scholarship, which is how I'll refer to it during this presentation. This presentation attempts to take a broader lens um, to kind of show um, the, the extent to which um, the free processing scheme has been used, um, taking more of a quantitative approach. Um, it also attempts to address the broader question of to what extent free processing initiatives from digital humanities platforms are supporting early career researchers, students, and those with limited funding. Um, as we're all aware, um, especially those who are um, within university institutions, it's clear that financial support is necessary to increase the diversity, um, but the quality of DH research as well. So as such, this paper, this presentation, um, helps clarify who is making use of the free processing scheme, uh, whether the scheme uh, currently is helping mediate access issues um, in a sector which is increasingly becoming more um, unequal, um, sadly. Um, so our general trajectory for the talk, hopefully the slide. So our general yeah, trajectory, um, we're gonna focus on, on three main things, depending on the time and how much I elaborate and um, talk. So we'll provide a bit of background to um, the Transcriber Scholarship and the Free Processing Scheme, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with, especially those who presented yesterday. Um, we'll then present the findings from quite a large content analysis of over 150 request forms, um, which were sent via email, um, and also um, kind of blend that with um, a supplement document, which was um, drawn up by um, the main um, contributors um, who help with the free processing scheme over at Read. Um, I'm also going to present some preliminary findings from a current survey, which is really bad practice because the data collection hasn't ended. Um, but I'm going to give you a, a kind of insight into that ahead of time and just some roundup thoughts um, as well. So DH as a sector um, is now recognising the historical barriers um, present in accessing digitised material, digital tools and digital infrastructures. This inequality goes well beyond financial barriers. It raises issues of language, hardware requirements and skill barriers, both as isolated factors um, and combined as this toxic brew. Um, as a result, there's been an unhealthy weighting historically um, in digital humanities towards um, the global north, um, and that can often be seen in the sector. Um, and to name drop a really, really good researcher who's working in this area is Rapika Rizam, um, who focuses on kind of coalescing a, a global south approach to DH to correct that balance. Um, so these issues present um, the need for a data ethics approach, compiling counter data in order to name impression when seen. As a response, those in DH should always seek to center social justice minded approaches, um, particularly when building tools, designing new workflows, and uh, considering means of access, challenging these previous inequalities and resisting the reinscription of exclusionary behaviors. Um, though, you know, 
though mindful of the fact that you know inequality can come in various shapes and forms in DH. And this presentation is going to look purely at funding, answering whether the transcribus free processing scheme can be part of this social justice approach, making um, DH as a sector more, more equitable. Um, the paper will also seek to address the, uh, the following questions. Um, what are the demographics of those using the Transcriber Scholarship? Um, what work? Again, we saw six great presentations yesterday, but what work is the scheme enabling? Um, are these schemes being utilized by the intended groups? So early career researchers, students, and those with limited funding. Um, and how can the scheme be extended um, to enhance this equitable access to DH platforms? Um, so as most of you are aware, just to give a bit of context, on October the 19th, 2020, Transcribers transitioned from a free to use tool to a pay for model with HDR training corresponding uh, to a required amount of paid for credits. Um, this formed a sort of freemium structure um, although that model doesn't quite fit, where transcripts' base functions lay out analysis, the text editor to um, perform your ground truth transcriptions were free to use with additional features, HTR training coming at a cost. Um, although the success of freemium models, especially in the business community, um, is unclear, such strategies um, are well used by software companies and are seen as a way of moving beyond one-off customer interactions towards long-term engagement. Newly registered accounts of transcribers, I'm sure you're familiar with this as well, uh, receive 500 free credits and that's you know roughly approximately in my own um, work is, is kind of enough to run a model over 400 to 500 handwritten pages. It obviously varies if those pages are, are printed text as well. Um, so Deng in two, uh, 2022 stressed that the free version may allow customers to sample the project, product before making a purchase decision and subsequently increase demand for the paid version, but it might also cannibalize demand of the paid version. Transcribus in this case is well positioned because users can train a model, you know, experiment within the tool and work out actually if the tool is, is for them um, and important to their work. Um, however, in the case of individual researchers working on small collections, um, these free credits could be enough to train a model um, initially for, you know, simple searching. Um, therefore, whether users purchase credits from Read is very much dependent on the size of their collections. So, to actually what's behind me, those applying to the Transcriber Scholarship Programme must fill out an online form. They have to indicate the amount of credits they expect to need. Um, their home institution, although this can be left blank, it has no bearing on um, the process, and a short description of their work, which is where it gets really interesting. Um, if accepted, credits are then allocated and an email notification is sent. Um, credits can be checked and monitored through the online portal of um, Transcribus Lite, and applicants um, can request up to 3,000 credits. Um, we'll get more into that as well. Um, so the broader study formed a content analysis of emails generated by the scholarship system, which looked like this. Um, this is what I received every time someone made an application to the scholarship program. Um, so it's almost kind of 20 emails a day on top of everything else. Um, so I got quite used to checking them. Um, and the emails that we've kind of factored into our analysis um, were sent between the 7th of November 2020 and the 16th of March 2022. So it broadly encompasses a year and a half uh, worth of credits. Um, and this allowed for the exploration of individual cognitive processes of applicants uh, related to the characteristics of their requests. So students, those conducting workshops and those, men um, those with limited funding were quite easy to identify. Early career researchers were harder to pinpoint because a lot of people didn't um, elaborate on their position within their given institution. In total, 161 requests were collated and interrogated. Um, these were then aggregated, anonymized in accordance with the University of Edinburgh's GDPR guidelines. Um, and alongside that, a set of six semi-structured questions were sent to read staff. Um, which they kindly replied to in a very um, 
well-organized one document that was quite easy to read and follow. So those responses have acted as a supplement um, to, um, to this study. So to actually get to the findings, so the second bit of our presentation, um, the free processing requests uh, submitted to the transgroupers team came from a total of 99 institutions. Um, it's not surprising that most of these institutions were universities and research institutes, 91 out of the 99 roughly. Um, but it gets quite interesting when you dig deeper into the, um, the additional eight institutions. Um, two free processing requests came from high schools, um, high school teachers. Um, one from Turlock in California and one from Vienna. Um, elsewhere, national and state libraries were involved, um, publishers and the Royal Botanical Gardens at Kew, who were looking to uh, apply transcribers to some of their field notebooks. Um, it appears then that readers reaching their main demographics, content holding institutions, university researchers, um, with the scheme only being used beyond these groups um, to a minimal degree. Um, the publicity and targeting of the scheme appear to coincide with the aims listed by Reed staff of facilitating research and contributing to the spread of methodologies in the history, in the, the era of historical documents. So looking at the data set geographically, um, applicants came from a total of 31 countries. Germany, the Netherlands, the UK and Switzerland are the best represented. Um, but compared to previous quantitative studies of the transcribers user base that we've completed, um, mostly of um, materials found on Google Scholar where transcribers is mentioned in scholarly research, um, this appears more diverse um, than those um, that formal published research. So more work geographically seems to be happening um, in the remit of informal experimentation, research tutorials, um, they seem to be distributed a little bit more widely. So Reed's focus on enabling common transna uh, transnational activities um, is clearly still a work in progress, although more diversity is seen in these requests than in those catalogued research papers. Despite a lot of these nations recognizing English as an official language, um, we had free processing requests from Australia, Brazil, uh, Canada, Ireland, Egypt, Estonia, Greece, Hong Kong, New Zealand, Norway, Portugal, and Slovakia. All of those were represented in these requests, but weren't represented in um, scholarship that is easily found online through Google Scholar. Um, so Transcribus appears to be at the center of you know, transnational practice um, when looking beyond this scholarly research at grayer material like credit requests. Um, moving away from purely a Western European um, view of digital humanities and this global North perspective um, that I mentioned um, as well. That said, the caveat is amongst the 161 requests, 140 came from European institutions, so 87%. So we've got a long way to go um, before Transcribus is used worldwide. Uh, the range of applicants' domains um, was also broad, reaching across um, different trading zones between the humanities and sciences, um, and the variety of research in, uh, interests. You know, it's hard to summarise in this presentation, but we had um, people working on the history of the 17th century Dutch Republic, um, investigating poor relief in Zurich in uh, the 19th, 20th centuries, uh, someone working on the 18th century burning of Kingston, Jamaica, uh, the 19th century Irish potato famine, histories of Jewish families, and that's just to name a few. Um, others had kind of more space to offer more insight into how greater access uh, to transcribus uh, was solving issues in their work. Um, a lot of people struggling with Roman cursive and current shrift um, who have kind of seen transcribus as a major help in their research uh, to make, as Reed says, the past readable. So in taking into account language materials, the diversity is even clearer. Um, free processing requests range from work on ancient Aramaic, Arabic, uh, Peruvian um, administrative documents, 16th century Slovak uh, evangelical um, sermons, parliamentary speeches in Scots, um, the Sengalese written press, um, Czech, Spanish literature, 
um, a huge amount of stuff. I'm just going to check the time so I'm not running over. Am I doing okay? Five minutes. Thank you. Oh, I didn't realize there's a card. That's quite snazzy. <laughs> We're okay, I think. Um, it can be identified that the transcriber scholarship is being used by the intended groups. 70% um, were students, uh, ranging from the undergraduate level to uh, PhD candidates. Early career researchers made up about 3%, so it's actually quite a small uh, number. And those performing tutorials made up about 15%. Um, although not prevalent, a few credit exemption requests came from quite established lecturers in the field. Um, whether that's because um, maybe they misinterpreted what the uh, free processing scheme was attempting to achieve, or whether it's an indication of the current state of academia that even established lecturers need uh, help from, from the transcriber scholarship. Um, but one read he, the applicant, is the author of more than 100 scientific publications in newspapers and conferences, and one has an edited book. His research interests include pattern recognition, machine learning, deep learning, and image analysis. Um, so yeah, quite interesting that even someone of that high esteem is still using um, the transcribus um, scholarship. Um, just being conscious of time, um, I'm going to throw some more stats out. Um, broadly, if all the applicants um, gained their required amount that they enlisted actually in their applications, although many um, asked for more than the 3,000 um, limits for credits, um, Transcribus and Reed have deployed and offered a total of 600, well, 666,882 credits. Um, and using the calculator on the website, that corresponds to about 128,000 um, euros. So it's a sizable chunk of um, money that's gone out, um, yeah, to ensure that people have access to, to such a wonderful tool. Um, one of the major things that came out from the review is that um, applicants sometimes struggled with figuring out the amount of requests that they need. So a lot of people put uncertain. I don't know if 10K credits will be enough. About dot, 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 maximum. I'm assuming I won't need more. I really don't know how many credits to ask for as a reasonable number to distribute while giving workshops. Um, advice would be welcome. Um, Reed staff also highlighted that sometimes working out credits could be difficult, um, pressing perhaps the need for streamlining that aspect of the service. Um, although the current structure enables longer discussions between Reed staff and researchers, usually via email, and any streamlined structure um, could potentially jeopardize uh, that sustained contact with our user base. So just to plug the next step, um, quickly, again, being conscious of time, um, to kind of add body to this quantitative study, um, we want to hear from you if you've benefited from the Transcriber Scholarship and if you've managed to evade me so far, because we have sent multiple emails out. Um, so hopefully the slides will be made accessible and um, you can find the enclosed link. Um, the survey began on August the 1st. It's due to end... Um, Hopefully don't leave it too late on January the 1st, 2023. Um, I'm not sure I've got much time to actually um, tell you any of the preliminary findings. Um, two, three more minutes. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> I don't want to deprive um, everyone else. Um, so a lot of people have said that without the scheme, um, you know, their work would otherwise not be possible. In some cases, the sheer scale of their work was cited as the main obstacle um, prior to gaining financial support. So free credits helped me transcribe and scan through larger quantities of material than I could have physically. Another person said, without receiving free credits, I would have had to minimize the text corpus to complete my research, which would minimize the outcome and its reliability. Um, even those who had enough time to complete large amounts of work, or were even willing to pay themselves thought similar with granted credits, making processing easier and faster. Um, someone said, yes, but it would have taken um, longer to process and I would have had to overhaul my methodology. Um, few people, again, as in perhaps indictment of um, current academic funding, um, hinted at more structural problems at their institutions, 
someone said there is no funding available for postgraduate taught dissertations at my institution, so that money would have had to come from my own pocket. Another cited that the prospect of gaining any sort of financial support for student led work was an impossibility at their institution, which made for quite sad reading. Um, the vast majority of respondents, 78.95%, um, were happy with the scheme, offering no suggestions. Some improvements uh, were mentioned, mostly um, directing more training materials towards those who are known to have received funding from the scheme, just to reduce the learning curve when people first use um, Transcribus. As a follow up, just as a, a brief visualization, this goes back to the, the free processing requests um, and not the survey. But here are the most frequent words used um, across all 161 um, requests. The size um, corresponds to how often the term was used. Um, of course, it's no surprise that the biggest term is transcribus, uh, which was mentioned 148 times. But elsewhere, you, you have some quite interesting findings. I realize I've still got I'm, which I probably should have uh, removed as a stop word. Um, but student, university, um, PhD studies, um, which all have a clear association with students applying for free processing, again, show that Readers is probably meeting um, its current user base, its intended user base um, for the free processing scheme. Um, so just to finish off, um, to ensure that DH remains, well, is as equitable as possible, um, and that the read co-op remains sustainable, having a solid dialogue with our users is essential, whether it's through free processing, through surveys. So as such, handwritten text recognition requires new approaches, both to historical material, but also to public engagement in order to best support um, our intended communities and uh, support the ways they're applying transcribers to cultural heritage materials. Um, so that's far, far, uh, yeah, certainly enough from me um, but I'd welcome any uh, questions and um, thank you for listening to a lot of stats, but <laughs> hopefully it wasn't too dry. Thanks a lot, Joe, for these insights. And yeah, uh, this is really a very important aspect of the cooperative to be able to support early career researchers and also people offering courses uh, and trying to, yeah, sort of um, educate the next generation of researchers what's possible these days with the help of AI. So are there any questions related to the talk? Yeah, just a question about, uh, did you take into account uh, the big projects like ours that uh, buy bulks of credits that benefit directly the student researchers? haven't that's a really good really yeah. good point to make this is purely a study of um requests that were made by, by the students. students themselves often you get supervisors um, who are quite supportive of obviously what their uh, students are doing that um, would give you a better that would scope. that's certainly a, another step we could take um yeah. definitely and, and then then the stats are even more impressive for the sheer amount of um and, and also we asked uh, in the summer schools, we asked uh, Transcribus uh, like uh, 40,000 credits to run this, uh, the summer school or the course you know, also, yeah. you know, that That's we are giving. So this gives another Yeah, we have, level. Um, we have done work, a survey went out last year that was the second major survey of the Transcribus user community after Melissa Terrace's one back in 2019. They looked at institutions instead of individual researchers. So this was kind of an attempt to get to the nitty gritty, more individualistic studies. Um, so hopefully between those studies, we've somehow captured the actual makeup of the cooperative, but it's, it's a real, really good suggestion. And the, the, the nice thing here uh, from a process uh, kind of view is that for the scholarships, we have a very good um, database, you could say, so there you really know how many scholarships have we granted, how many credits have gone out with uh, projects um, where we, yeah, um, provided some free credits in order to facilitate, for example, summer school or something like that. Um, I don't think we have a, a central record of those. So those would be harder to find out about. So that's just a one uh, a pragmatic uh, aspect of of this study i think i should say as well that 
biggest amount of credits that was applied for, but obviously Reed, we are quite close to the airport. Um, obviously Reed couldn't give their required amount, but we did have a few um, applications that came from very big institution-wide projects. So someone asked for 30,000 credits, um, I think was, was the top end. And of course, a big dialogue happened yeah. Reed about that. Um, so we've still got an indication of some of those projects happening. Yeah, and we've also supported researchers with larger projects uh, in emerging economies, at least for part of the project. So we've done that too, which mm, did not happen strictly, uh, yeah, under the flag of uh, the, the scholarship program. But so, yeah, uh, this is basically just the numbers that you are able to get in a clean way. So yeah, maybe we should keep better track of the others as well because they are impressive too. So yeah, so that's more our fault <laughs> and no fault of yours, of course, uh, for not uh, keeping a good track of those numbers. So, uh, are there any other questions? I think we've got time for maybe one more. Otherwise we can move on to the next talk. So, um, Thanks a lot, Joe. You got a transcribers mug too. Feel free to fill it with tea, coffee, or IPA. I hear. <laughs>